how can I make the impossible? How interesting is a stamp? And how can you see something I can't? Can a fly stop a train? It can't possibly do that, Fred, because nope. it's only little and the train's big. Yeah, impossible. It's a mass differential. A train would hit a fly and just flatten it. So you say 10p says a fly can't Definitely stop a train. Definitely easiest 10p ever. Yeah, okay. this one. Okay, picture the scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fly buzzing along a railway track in this direction. Mm -hmm. Express train zooming along a railway track in this direction. <laughs> Train wipes a fly without so much as a by your leave. That's what yeah. we said. Well, End stop of it, story. It? Case dismissed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we get our ten P's back. Or is it? Oh. Because I put it to you, members of the jury, <laughs> yes. that my client, the fly, in fact stopped the train, albeit for the briefest moment in time, but stopped that train in its tracks. Mm -hmm. Let me elucidate. There are three crucial stages here. Stage one. My client, the fly, travelling along the railway track mm. in this direction. Yes. Mm. Stage three, my client, the fly, travelling along the railway track in this direction, attached to the front of the train. Yes. yes. What's stage Definitely. two, then? Stage two, my client, the fly, travelling neither in this direction nor in that direction. Yeah. In other words, my client, the it fly, stopped. had stopped in order yes. to change yes. direction. Yeah. And at yeah. the precise yeah. moment, he became attached to the front of the train. Yeah. To change direction, yes. he stopped. Therefore, if he stopped, then the train must what? also Because they're attached to each because other. Because they're attached yeah. to each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, is yeah, how yeah, a fly yeah. That Stops is train. amazing, Brilliant. Fred. That Brilliant really is Complete amazing. and utter nonsense, of course. I mean, utterly stupid. Fancy the pair of you thinking the train would have stopped. The moment the train is, the fly just simply carries on like that. The whole thing's a complete, delicious paradox. That's an expensive paradox, that, Fred. How can you see something that I can't? Carol, tell me what you can see on these I glasses. I can see Bart Simpson on one side. OK, Fred. Words saying, no way, dude, on the other uh, side. What okay. do you see, then? Well, what would you expect me to see the on the other side? Around, yeah, the other way around. Yeah, the design the other way around. Uh-huh. Not so. Look at oh, that. Ordinary sunglasses. Clear, dark sunglasses. He OK, here's another example for you. Tell me what you see. Union, Union Jack. Jack. What's going to be on the other side if it's transparent? Union, Union Jack, Jack reversed. Yeah, the other way around. Where's it gone? It's gone. No, no, do, yeah, it again. do it again. Oh, see? It's Clever. Done. Yeah? How's it done? How's it done? It's all done with dots. Dots so small that you can't see them. You see in the gaps between the dots, but you can see the patterns that the dots leave behind. Let me explain again for you. Now then, um, just to demonstrate how this whole principle works, sheet of glass, quite transparent, with dots printed on it for now. Large dots. They're nowhere near as big as this in the real thing. OK. Now, if I flip it over, you can see dots on the other side as well. Yeah. Right? However, if I then reprint on top of those dots the pattern that I want you to see with different coloured dots, like so... Wow! Yes, oh. you can read the message. It says how on that side, and the other side would be almost yeah. transparent if those dots weren't actually orange, OK? Yeah. That's basically how it works, but where would you use it? Well, maybe a cafe owner might find it particularly useful if he wants to advertise his wares in the window. Instead of putting a poster up, he could put this stuff up. Normally, you can't see out through a poster if you're inside a cafe. Not any more transparent posters. Marvellous invention. Now then, um, here's one for you, Fred. Yeah. Imagine this was part of a phone box, OK? What would you expect to see on the other side of this glass? The same thing in reverse, especially the words. The words in reverse? No, look, the words remain the right way round. Now, that is clever. Yeah, not only do you not get the words in reverse, but a completely new print, the words the right way round on the other side. OK, doesn't have to be flat surfaces. Oh, no! You could print on brollies. Nice pattern, but on the inside, completely transparent. You see where you're going. Yes, you don't And lever. you don't poke people's eyes out as Precisely. Going along. Well, if it's so easy, why hasn't someone done it before? Well, it's the theory that's easy, but the practice of printing dots on top of dots so far is so difficult that the only company who've managed to work it out how to do it are keeping it a closely guarded secret. Now, how can I squirt someone in the eye? Well, I can with this squirty swan. If I blow down this end, the water in the body will go straight forward. You're not squirting me in the eye, uh, Oh, if I squirt you, you're allowed to squirt me. 
All Fair right. enough, yes. I'm an elderly broadcaster. You don't skirt me. <laughs> Thank you. Your turn. Now, you're going to get it now. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? Now? Well, I'm not going to give you the answer now. But I'm going to introduce you to the man who designs and makes these things. He is a master craftsman. Ed Eigelhart, master glassblower, I want you to show us how to make a squirty swan. I was very fortunate because that's what I'm in the middle of doing. <laughs> well, there's a coincidence. Now, what are you doing first of all? Warming up one end of this section of tubing. Yeah. And because it's only the one end, that's where the body of the piece will be. Do you want to blow this? What, blow the body? Yeah. Will you help me? Yeah, well, I'll hand it to you. you. Okay, I'll keep you on hold holding it, it but right. you just blow when I say, and All don't blow any harder. Puff. If I say, whoa, back off, okay? A little more, a little more. Come on a bit harder. That's enough. Perfect. Oh. Perfect. Hey. Hey. It was nothing, Ed. You could, hmm. Well, it is nothing, but you could do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, okay, we'll, so what's the next bit? The next bit is to get the neck. And the neck obviously has to be longer than this, so yeah. we're going to have to stretch it. Right. And I'll stretch it and bend it, more or less one right after the other. Okay. And that um, ensures that we get a smooth curve. Do you feel that it's just about the right temperature? Or? Yeah, well, I can feel how soft it's getting by how little connection there is between the two ends that I'm holding on to. And I can also see, because there's uh, quite a lot of light coming off the glass, when it's hot, you can see the glow. So you're just letting that so drop that, yeah, down Yeah, you let it get longer. Yeah. And then you just pick up a bend. Now, why do you, you carry little, on blowing there? Well, just to keep it from collapsing down. You know, so when that something the water goes around. Can go through, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, wonderful. Well, now we've got the swan shape, which is very similar to the one we were using over at the table. But the secret of this is. Yet to come. We have to put a hole in the back we of the head. We have to put a little hole, and that is the, uh, the hole there at the yep, back of the head. that's it. Now, this is how. Don't you drill it? No, nah, no. Nah. Far too long. Just oh. warm it up. And oh. go a little. <laughs> it's brilliant. Why did it just burst there, then? Because you'd Because that's the only down. place where it was hot. So that was the weakest point in the glass? It was the softest point. Excellent. All right, well, now we have the squirty swan. You obviously let that cool down right. and cut the ends off. Mm -hmm. But um, why is it that sometimes it squirts somebody else and sometimes it squirts yourself? It's all Explain in how you hold it. it. Okay. Right? Now, we know this is the secret hole, right? Mm -hmm. It's very secret if you've got your thumb over the end of it. Right. Because now there's only two holes. If I blow in this end, water goes out that yeah. way. Yeah, yes, thank right? you. Yes. But somebody else holding on to it might be afraid to hold it by its neck, and so they may hold it by its body. <laughs> and it squirts them. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Ed Eigelhart, thank you very much indeed. Hey, you're and welcome. that is how you can squirt someone in the eye. How interesting is a stamp? Rather depends where it comes from. More of that in a moment. First of all, are either of you two philatelists? What? What? Philatelist. Do you collect stamps? No. Not easy, yes. this. Let's consider the ordinary stamp, <laughs> and this is a very ordinary stamp, except it's also an optical illusion stamp. Gives the impression this chap has no hair. <laughs> Absolute nonsense, of course. But looking oh. at that as an example, what are the basic requirements of a stamp? Well, stamps are flat. Yep. Stamps are flat. Got to be made of paper, got always. Got to be made of yeah, paper. They've got pictures on them. They've yeah. got pictures on them. They have those little perforations around the end, so you can... They have them. those and little perforations. Sticky, and they stick it. That and is they're sticky as yep. well. So all stamps must be like that. Well, mostly, of course, they are. Uh, except when it comes to stamps from Bhutan. Where? Bhutan in the Himalayas, the realm of the dragon, a very exotic and beautiful land, rarely visited by foreigners, but a place with a quite fascinating stamp industry. Allow me to consult Fred's stamp album. Inside here, some real treasures. Now, in Bhutan, they do do what you might call conventional stamps, such as this one of Gaza, who goes <laughs> down kidding. very well in downtown Timpu, the capital of Bhutan. But in other respects, stamps from Bhutan really do break the mould. Take a look at these, made of plastic, and they are actually raised. One here of Gandhi, John F. Kennedy, Winston Churchill. And if I tilt them over, you can in fact see that they are raised. They're not flat, are they? They are not flat. So we've 
dismissed that part They're of not the made proceedings. Of paper either. And not made of paper. And nor indeed are these. To celebrate the steel industry in Bhutan, these stamps are made of metal. Really? Yes. That's fantastic. What else did you want to say? Yeah, well, uh, perforations. Perforations. Yeah. These stamps don't have any perforations, do they? Celebrating the Those space industry and holographic as well. Not a perforation in sight. All these stamps have had pictures on them. Ah, except these. These are discs and they actually play. Listen. What's the song? The song, as you call it, is the Bhutan National Anthem. No picture there, no perforations, and not made of paper. Fascinating. Isn't it? You're going to tell me now that Bhutan make a stamp that isn't sticky, aren't you? Don't be daft, Toppy. All stamps must be sticky, otherwise they wouldn't stick to the envelope. So how interesting is a stamp? Mm. Well, if it's a stamp from Bhutan, very interesting indeed. Very, very interesting. How do you soothe... A sting. I'm talking about wasp and bee stings. Carol? Uh, you get some cream from the chemist and you put it on. No, yeah. no, yeah. the best thing, the good old-fashioned remedies. Bicarb of soda or vinegar. I, I can never remember which. You're right, Fred. You remembered well. Bicarbonate of soda and vinegar, but how does it work? Well, uh, wasp stings are very, very alkali, OK? And too much alkali on your skin hurts. Bee stings are very, very acid. Too much acid on your skin hurts. Because if you look at this scale, you have the two opposites, acid at one end, alkali at the other, and skin is somewhere nice and neutral in the middle. So what you want to do is add the opposite to bring it back to neutral, to soothe the sting. And this is how it works. Now then, in here, I've got some bicarbonate of soda. Now, to prove, let's see, that this bicarbonate of soda should be very alkali. Now, I shall prove that by putting in litmus paper. If it turns blue or green, then it's very alkali. Look at that. Yeah. Yep, definitely yeah. alkali. OK, yeah. so if you were to add um, bicarbonate of soda to a bee sting, it would neutralise it. What about your vinegar? Vinegar? Well, let's have a look. I've got some vinegar in a jar here. If I add my litmus paper to this vinegar, it should turn red, proving that it's acid. Oh, yeah. There it is. Now, so what happens if you add opposites together, the alkali and the acid? Watch what happens. <laughs> that's the action of neutralisation. OK, and that's what you want to do to your skin. But how do you remember which is which? Which do you put on which? Well, it's actually very, very simple. Bicarbonate of soda goes on a bee sting. B for B. Yeah, B, B for, for B. B yeah. Yes. What about the vinegar? A vinegar goes on a wasp sting. <laughs> and it does actually work. But if it doesn't work for you, if you still feel discomfort after being stung by a bee or a wasp, it may be because you're allergic to the sting. So go and get it checked out by a doctor and he'll show you how to neutralize your sting. Now, how can I make the impossible? Can I make one of those? What's that? Well, that's a triangle. It's yep. certainly not impossible because here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Quite simple. <laughs> Three bits of wood, triangular yep. shape, no problem at all. All right, then, Gareth. Yeah. What about this? What's that? It's triangle two. Oh, no, no, no. It's a no. bit unusual. No, you can't make that. It's sort of twisted. That, that's an impossible shape, isn't yeah, it? An impossible shape to make, you would think. Gareth, have a look at this. What do you see? How have you done that? That you is can't. the impossible triangle. Yeah. Actually, I've cheated because the pieces of wood are not joined together wow. at the top. It is, in fact, three different pieces of wood which only look like the impossible triangle from where you're sitting. Not actually impossible, okay. but still carry on. Well, it is impossible, well, actually, not, Freddie. But, never mind. but what about this one here? Now, this one is totally impossible for anyone yeah. in the world ever to make. It's not, yeah. actually, because I knocked up one Freddie, of them last night. Freddie, it yeah. is I impossible. Did. For the window and on, You've on my new extension. You've knocked one of these up. I'm, yeah, I made it last night. You? Yeah. Show us how. You see, you're an academic. I'm an artisan. To achieve the impossible, all you have to do, and it's crucial, is to get your angles right. And if your angles are right, the rest will follow. No how has he done that, Carol? That's all. That is, that is Get fantastic. your angles right. But hang on. Yep, it, hang it, it, on. It, 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 what it, it, is uh, this, Fred, here? I can walk through this, can I not? Yes. This doesn't exist. Meaning that this is oh. not one single piece of wood. In Does my mind, it, it is. In your mind, it might well be. This is not an impossible window frame, is it? No. No, it isn't. You admit to that? Yes. OK, well, that is how, particularly if you use Dynage and Sons master builders, you can never build the impossible. And that is... How, how for now. now.
Fred, what do your kitchen cabinets look like? <laughs>